Iniciamos una nueva cobertura del Mobile World Congress 2013, un año más estamos en Barcelona, esta vez no tenemos el déjà vu clásico que teníamos en todos los años porque el Congreso se ha movido a otra ubicación, ya lo habrán visto posiblemente en las referencias que hace el Congreso en su página web, eh, es un centro de convenciones nuevo que se hizo aquí en Barcelona y que está a unos 4 kilómetros de donde se hacía el antiguo Congreso, no tiene la belleza estética quizá eh, o el carisma que tenía la antigua FIRA, que eran eh, edificios emblemáticos históricos, pero sí que es un edificio muy cómodo a nivel logístico. La primera entrevista de hoy, de una serie de batería de entrevistas que vamos a tener durante el Congreso, la iniciamos con Steve de Tarana Wireless y en este Congreso lo que vamos a intentar esta vez es traerle el mayor número de empresas posibles eh, nuevas, es decir, empresas con las que no hayamos tenido contacto en el pasado para que, aparte de las que ya conocen ustedes de toda la vida, tengan un panorama diferente con, con nuevas empresas. Voy a cambiar al inglés para hablar con Steve y vamos a conocer un poquito mejor a Tarana Wireless. Steve, welcome to uh, Tradicional.com. Thank you for having me. Um, so we're staying, uh, telling our audience that this year we're going to try to bring companies that we have not interviewed in the past, that are new to us, new to the, the region, even though if you are not in the region, it doesn't matter. Uh, so we want to know your take on different things. So I guess the first thing for us, even for me and for our audience, would be to know who Tarana Wireless is and what do you do. Fantastic. So Tarana Wireless was founded in 2009, and we're focused primarily on small cell backhaul. So trying to enable carriers to deploy this new technology to enable higher capacity networks. Okay. Anything in Latin America you're planning in the future? We are, actually. We're a little active in, a, in, uh, in Latin America, focused in Brazil and Argentina. Okay. In, in the small cell backhaul space, also in the MDU market, trying okay. to provide high-speed backhaul uh, and access. Just tell us why Argentina. Just curious. I mean, there's, uh, Brazil, I understand. Yes. Uh, and nothing against Argentina. I mean, we are headquartered in Argentina. Sure. But, you know. The interesting thing about Argentina is the early spectrum available at 3.5 okay. uh, megahertz or gigahertz mm -hmm. that we expect to use. Uh, we have a partner that we've been talking with about doing some deployments in that region. Okay, so you're doing backhauling for small cells wirelessly, I understand, obviously. Yes. Parana Wireless, probably the name. That's right. So in specifically in, in Argentina and Brazil, we're looking to actually provide access in those locations to uh, large density buildings, apartment complexes, okay. and such. So you're going to be the last, so the, the last point of access, actually, not just yes, the backhauling. Yes. Right. So. The, the, the customers would see a traditional Ethernet connection to their location, but we would provide access to that building via wireless communications. Okay, tell us what you're seeing in terms of the small cell deployments around the world. What is your take on, on that phenomenon, and how long do you think it would take for Latin America to catch up with that? So our view on, on small cells, you know, this year in terms of 2013, there'll be initial deployments throughout, I would say, uh, the United States as well as Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, in Europe, focused on 3G. In the United States, initially 3G and the move into 4G. Uh, our view on Latin America is that it'll probably be a year or two behind there, uh, based on density of subscribers and, and use of capacity. Uh, you know, I don't propose I can uh, forecast the future, but that's just our general view. Okay. What about the challenges of bulk calling small cells? Because we did a survey recently, uh, and we asked the operators in Latin America, do you think the small cells will bring any particular challenges to to your back calling? Some people say yes, some people say no. It was a bit of a split. Sure. Uh, some people say fundamentally not, nothing changes. Some people thought, you know, probably you should look into that. Tell us what, what you think the back call is going to look like with the small cells. Yeah, we, we've, we've talked to carriers worldwide throughout Europe, Asia, Africa, uh, uh, United States, and fundamentally, small cells is a different approach to, to network architecture. Uh, it requires very high speed access. We're talking, you know, greater than 50 to 70 megabits per second per small cell. and Traditionally, that would be supported by fiber. Fiber is expensive. It's mm -hmm. hard to get to a small cell location. Uh, and our view is that wireless is the optimum type of technology to use uh, to address that situation. Mm -hmm. We're focused on, on a solution we call universal backhaul that allows us to do either line of sight or non-line of sight, all at very high rate, very robust uh, type of backhaul solution. Is that what you're showing here at the show? What, what is the, the main product you are showcasing here? And why did you decide to bring this as, as the main? Absolutely. So. This is our first real show that we're presenting at, and we just announced our product, the company, uh, and our advisors about two weeks ago. And so we're excited here to show our technology. We've got a booth uh, that has our units in there, and we've been having uh, scheduled meetings with carriers and potential customers. You said the company was founded in 2009, yes. which is fairly new. Yes. Can you give us some background as to who founded the company or sure, why, sure. so people can understand? Because, you know, four years in this industry, could seem a lot or could seem just, you know, these guys don't of have course, experience. So. Of course. Tell so us who you are. We were founded in 2009. That was when the, the four of the founders came together with a unique idea. Uh, the company for about two years was incubated. Uh, a fifth founder joined. And then we were 
uh, initially located in Berkeley, California. Mm -hmm. In 2011, the company was funded uh, for the first time. So just about two years ago, we got our first round of funding, and we've been focused on, since that time, developing product. And the background of the engineer team? Or? The background is uh, generally four researchers out of UC Berkeley mm -hmm. uh, working Initially, they were working in India and some other locations to try to do some wireless technology. Um, they uh, hooked up with a, another founder, the fifth founder of the company, and together they decided to, to put together a backhaul solution. Uh, the, the background on the folks is in the area of technology, uh, algorithms, software, and wireless communication. So a very robust uh, group of individuals founding the company. Okay. Now you said that the backhauling would be done through the 3.5, or the connection through the 3.5? Yes which was typically considered for uh, WiMAX, sure. right? So tell us. So our solution supports a variety of bands. We're at 2.5, at 3.5, we expect to be working at 5.8. In Latin America specifically, as well as in Europe, 3.5 was a WiMAX band. Mm -hmm. uh, as many know, you know, WiMAX uh, initially had some uh, deployments, but since has gone uh, kind of by the wayside, so it leaves that spectrum fallow. Uh, we see that again in Europe as well as Latin America. Uh, and in our view, is 3.5 is good for a fixed access. Mm -hmm. uh, it may be challenged in terms of mobility, yep. and so we expect that that band will be a prime location for backhaul spectrum. Now, you're, but you're not providing access to the 3.5 directly, just for backhauling. Just for backhaul. And so we're not doing any. What wireless technology are you using? Uh, we use an OFDM-based solution. It's our our own proprietary communication protocol, okay. and we have a whole host of core intellectual property around signal processing. So that's, we believe we have a very robust link that is, uh, at this point, no one in the industry can provide the type of capabilities we have in terms of range, non-line of sight, or throughput capabilities. All right, well, I'll uh, address my audience to go to your uh, website, Please check it out, it. and if they're here at the show and they can see this video, then visit your stand. That'd be great, we're at torontowireless.com. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, appreciate Take your care. time.